my Govanen. Welcome to the Tolkien Lore Channel. I'm the Tolkien Geek, and I've done several videos in the past about the differences between characters in terms of comparing Tolkien's original version versus Peter Jackson's movies, and in this one I'm going to be covering one where the character is so radically different, but not necessarily in the same kind of way that I've covered before. Many of the other characters I've covered, like, say, Theoden, something about their intrinsic you know, goodness or badness or something about the way that they act, you know, in the world it betrays something very deep-seated in their nature. Here, the difference is really kind of an emotional one and just like a personality trait. But it's so radical because Legolas in Peter Jackson's movie trilogy, or really both of them, is this very stoic, quiet, reserved, but capable of being an absolute monster on the battlefield. Whereas in the book, he is very much a, you know, a powerful physical character because he's an elf, and Tolkien actually points this out, I believe, in a letter uh, where he basically said he's the most tireless of the whole fellowship. He's, you know, powerful enough to draw a war bow and bring down an Osgul, all this stuff. But his personality is just completely different. And the the difference is so stark that you have to, you know, if you get caught up in watching the movies too often and don't go back and read the source material enough, you tend to get this sense that elves are just these very ethereal, stoic beings who don't really get all that emotional about much of anything. Elrond gives this impression... Legolas gives this impression. You don't meet too many other elves, but Haldir and Celeborn and Galadriel all kind of give the same vibe that there's not a whole lot of emotionality to elves. There are several scenes in the Peter Jackson Lord of the Rings movies that bring this to light, and one of the ones that I always think of when I think of kind of the quintessential Peter Jackson Legolas is the one where he and Aragorn are at Metaselt after the Battle of Helm's Deep, and Legolas is just kind of out there staring into the night sky, and he says, the stars are veiled, and he goes on a little bit further than that, but I mean, he's just, it's like he senses that Sauron is about to connect with Pippin in the Pal Palantir, which makes no absolute sense at all, because Legolas wouldn't be able to get that but just the way he delivers those lines it's like he's just almost in a meditative state or something and this happens a lot I mean there's a lot of other scenes but there are a few that I want to compare kind of directly because they make a really big impact but to get us started on book Legolas here there are a few scenes where we really get Legolas's sense of humor and the one that the one that really stands out is of course when they're on Caradhras trying to pass over the mountains as opposed to under them and they're getting snowed in and everybody is absolutely wet and miserable and nobody is happy uh but Somehow Legolas remains lighthearted, and the book actually uses that word. Alone of the company, he remained light of heart. Uh, so <laughs> they're talking about how they're going to get down off the mountain because the snow has basically stopped, and they can see basically there's just walls of snow all around them. Uh, they had lit a fire, and it kept the snow from, you know, just gathering around their feet, but it's, you know, outside the ring of that, you know, little fire pit, basically, it's just walls of snow as far as they can see. I mean, they can kind of see over it, and it's not that tall, but anyway, Boromir at one point says, you know, if we can't, you know, we may just have to push our way through. Legolas says, you know, if Gandalf could just you know, cause a fire, he could just melt the snow in front of us. And Gandalf does not take kindly to that remark. And he's like, I have to have something to work on. I can't just burn snow. He's, of course, very irritated with Legolas because Legolas is just kind of 
being cheeky at this point. But it gets worse because he will then go on to say, after Aragorn and Boromir have already started trying to play snowplow with the snow, he says, uh, let a, you know, a farmer plow, but let a otter swim. And then he gets up and decides he's going to run over the snow. And by the way, part of the earlier conversation about Gandalf burning the snow was Gandalf retorted, you know, if elves could go and find the sun and bring it here, they could melt the snow too. So he's kind of jibing back at Legolas in his own joking style, but Gandalf is being much more sarcastic about it. So when Legolas gets up and he's he, he says an otter for swimming and then he says, you know, for walking lightly over snow, an elf. And uh, he turns around and he looks at Gandalf and he says, I go to find the sun. And he's just cheery about the whole thing. And he just runs off, you know, running on the snow. And then he eventually comes back. And then he says, well, I don't bring the sun. She's, you know, down in the, you know, over the fields of the south. And a little snow wreath on this little hillock bothers her not at all. He's like just, you know, to the sun... Our troubles are just nothing, and who cares, right? I mean, he's just... Everything about this scene and the way he talks and plays it all off is just shows that he just does not have the same problem that everybody else is having, which is Frodo earlier was about to pass out from cold, which means he was probably getting hypothermia and probably darn near getting some frostbite. Boromir was, you know... Fairly stoic, but probably not super happy. Aragorn was, again, not super happy, stoic. The All the hobbits are just miserable. Gandalf, you can tell from his remarks, is grumpy because he's uncomfortable. Legolas is like the only one who has anything like a cheery disposition, and it's in such stark contrast. Now, there are other scenes that really play up the emotional differences between book Legolas and movie Legolas, but this is the one that really highlights the humor aspect. But now I want to kind of get a little more away from the humor and just show generally that Legolas is not a stoic character. So the first time we meet Legolas in the book, and in the movie of course, uh, is at the Council of Elrond. Now if you watch Ralph Bakshi, then we meet him even earlier than that, but we're not going to get into that. Uh, so he... At the Council of Elrond, Legolas, in the movie, really his main role is just to kind of like be point man for sticking to Elrond's idea of, you know, destroying the ring, and he's also standing up for Aragorn's right to be king of Gondor. He doesn't do a whole lot of anything there, and you could tell he gets a little hot under the collar, but Legolas in the book, he first talks whenever... Everybody gets done talking about Gollum, and of course he has to deliver the very unfortunate news that Gollum has escaped the you know care of the Mirkwood Elves. And, of course, reading a book, you can't tell emotional intonation in the lines that he gives, but the fact that he begins his lines with, alas, alas, he puts a double alas in front of what he's about to say, uh, he says, now I have to deliver the news that I was sent to give, but only now do I see how bad they may seem to everybody else here. He is, you know, he is clearly giving an emotive outburst of, oh man, I'm sorry, this is going to be really bad, and I didn't know how bad it was until y'all got through talking. So, the fact that he leads off with the double alas, that's that's one thing. There are also other scenes that you can kind of more directly compare and in particular, the one that I want to look at is when the Balrog reveals itself in Moria. Because in the movie, of course, when the Bal Balrog hasn't exactly become visible yet, but Gandalf knows what's coming, and Boromir says, what is this new devilry? And Gandalf said, a Balrog, a demon of the ancient world. And you can see Legolas, it shifts to his face, and he's just like, you know, his eyes grow wide, and he's... You could tell that he's terrified, but he doesn't make a sound. He doesn't say anything. And at no point in any of the, you know, whatever, does he ever betray any other emotion in the whole Balrog thing. In the book, 
the Balrog really only shows up at the bridge, and they don't know that there's a Balrog until that point. And Legolas has his bow raised. He's about to shoot something, and then the Balrog makes its appearance, and he drops his... Well, he doesn't drop the bow, but he, you know, drops it in the sense that he lowers it, and the arrow just falls out, and he shouts, Ay, ay, a Balrog has come! Because he is mortally terrified. He's an elf. He knows what this thing is, and it's he knows it's bad. Uh, but the emotional outburst is the point here. In movie version of Legolas, he is terrified, but he's very stoic about it. His eyes go wide, and that's it. In the, bo in the book, he literally shouts out of fear. This is the kind of thing Legolas does in the, the book. He is very much willing to express his emotions. There's also several other points, too. Now, in some of these ways, the book and the movie are not that far apart. So, for example, there's a point near the Mines of Moria where <laughs> Nicholas and Gimli get into a little bit of a tussle, both in the movie and the book, although it's a little bit different in each. In the movie, Gimli is saying, you know, the Dwarf vo doors are invisible when closed, and Gandalf says, yes, their masters can't even find them when their secrets are forgotten, and Legolas says, why doesn't that surprise me? And you could tell that he's kind of had a disdainful attitude towards Gimli the whole time, because even at the Council of Elrond, as soon as Gimli says, and my axe, he has this look like, oh, here we go. So... You could tell that he doesn't think much of dwarves at this stage. And later, of course, they will become good friends. But in the book, the conversation is a little bit different. And I think the the emotion there is a little stronger because it's not merely the difference between dwarves and elves. You know, the elves just kind of don't particularly like dwarves. What happens is... Gandalf is talking about the history of Eregion and talking about how the elves and dwarves used to be on friendlier terms. And Gimli says, well, it's not the fault of the dwarves that the friendship waned. And Legolas retorts, I have not heard that it was the fault of the elves. He gets kind of passive-aggressive. Gandalf puts a stop to it. He basically says, I've heard both, and we're not going to hash it out now. So can you two at least be friends? Well, he gets his wish because the interesting part is, of course... After Lothlorien, immediately after Gandalf dies, basically, Legolas and Gimli become great friends because Gimli becomes completely smitten with Galadriel and becomes her Lancelot to her Guinevere. <laughs> and, of course, this turns into, you know, one of the scenes where it is fairly accurate, and that, of course, is where they meet Eomer, and Gimli is getting all hot under the collar in defense of Galadriel, and Legolas, you know, pulls his bow and tells Eomer, you'd be dead before your stroke fell. That scene is one of the few where they come really close to being the same in the book and the movie. Although, I have to imagine that in Tolkien's mind, Tolkien, Tolkien's Legolas probably would have delivered the lines a little bit different than Peter Jackson's, because in Peter Jackson's, he draws his bow and he says, you would die before your stroke fell. And it's, you could tell he's heated, but he's not extreme in his expression of his feeling. Whereas, given what we know about Book Legolas, I think his expression of those lines might have been a little stronger and more emotive. Uh, there are a few other, you know, places in the book where, of course, this becomes a little more apparent. So, for example, when Legolas, Gimli, and Aragorn take the Paths of the Dead, we don't see them for a long time. Uh, but then, when they finally come back, Legolas will end up talking about their arrival at the port of Pelargir and his hearing of the gulls. And, of course, Galadriel kind of warned him in a prophecy, more or less, about, you know, be careful of the gulls because, there you go, you're going to end up with... You know, you beware of the sea is the actual line, but it's the seagulls that Legolas will later attribute to, to which he will attribute his longing for the sea being awakened. And... He will, again, use that word, alas. He will say, alas for the gulls. You know, he's he's kind of expressing the fact that he is regretting the fact that he has heard the seagulls and heard the sea and awakened the sea longing because now he's never going to be really at peace in Middle-earth again. 
and he and Gimli have this kind of heartfelt conversation where they, you know, Gimli tries to console him and say, there's still a lot of things to do and see in Middle Earth, and, you know, it'd be really sad if all the elves left, and, of course, Legolas knows that the elves are all going to leave and whatever, and this is part of the reason why he's sad. It's like, this is inevitable, and it's unfortunate, but that, again, emotive expression, alas for the gulls, you know, Legolas is an emotional character who shows his emotions a lot in the actual book version of his character. And in the Peter Jackson version, he just doesn't. He's, you know, very much always being like, and this is a stupid example, but like the drinking game, and I think this is only in the extended cut of the Lord of the Rings, but he and Gimli have a drinking game, and he's just drinking it, and then at one point, when Gimli is already slobbering drunk, he will say... I feel something, a slight tingling in my fingers. I think it's affecting me. And then, <laughs> and then Gimli basically just passes out, says, and then Legolas says, game over. You know, it, it's like he has no joie de vivre. He's got no, I mean, there's just nothing about movie Legolas that is terribly interested in much of anything. Everything is just, he's just impassive. Nothing really affects him emotionally, it seems. At least not much. There are a few things where he will. But in the book, it's like every other line, you know, he's getting kind of emotional about something. And so it's just the absolute stark contrast. And this is not just Legolas. I mean, in, in the book, the elves are much more likely to be, you know, merry and, you know, just cutting up or whatever. I mean... Elrond himself will get into humorous back and forths with Bilbo and other people, but Legolas I wanted to focus on because he's the one elf that we really see throughout the story, and he is very much a an emblem or or type of how the elves get mistreated in Peter Jackson's movie in in those terms because just like he is every other elf that Peter Jackson covers kind of gets the same treatment at a lesser level, but still, it's it's there. So, that is movie versus book Legolas, and I, I think this bears, you know, repeating, because it is one of those things that, because we encounter elves relatively rarely, we don't get a whole lot of you know, interaction with them, and so it's a lot easier to forget, I think, how elves really behave in Tolkien's world, and so reminding ourselves that elves are not these ethereal, stoic things that just don't get affected by much of anything in the world around them is just simply not true. Now, it's true that they do kind of separate themselves from a lot of worldly concerns by the time we get to the Third Age and the events of the Lord of the Rings, but that is a matter of choice, not a matter of their temperament. You know, it's it's not like things go on around them and they're just like, eh, whatever, stoic. No, that's, you know, they keep themselves to themselves, but they are very much emotionally impacted by lots of things that go on around them. So I hope this was a useful look at how elves in general, but especially Legolas in the book is just a much more emotional and therefore I think a much more relatable character. If you did enjoy this, please give it a thumbs up, share it around, subscribe to catch all my future content. If you're on YouTube, make sure you click the bell icon so you don't miss any updates. You can also check my description for other video platforms, my uh, podcasting platforms. You can also follow me on Twitter at JRRT Lore for occasional Tolkien related trivia questions. And you can find support links in the description as well. Until the next time, I'm the Tolkien Geek, signing out for the Tolkien Lore Channel. Namariye.